and welcome to the next new episode of Notice Board brought to you by HR Katha and the Oscar goes to Parasite. No, no, no. That's not what I'm really thrilled about. I'm really delighted about the fact that for the first time in 92 years, a movie which has not been made in the English language has actually been given the Oscar for the best picture. Isn't that amazing that even the foreign language film as it was called is now being termed as the international section. The, those films are international. So there is a move away from being extremely English dominated to a more inclusive worldview. And this is perhaps for me the best big thing to have happened in this particular week. So if you haven't watched the Oscars, look it up somewhere and just take delight in the fact that maybe the next phase of work is going to see changes in the more inclusive way brought to you by all these actors, creative people, and who knows who else. How does the role of HR change when something happens in that entire sector? Uh, who can talk about it better than somebody from telecom? And you know, I got a chance to talk to the CEO of this company called Subex, which plays in that telecom sector. It's a very, very niche player. And the, I like the way that uh, the CEO really summed up the changes that he sees in that entire space, what is happening in telecom, and as a result of that, what does HR need to do? So over to Vinod, let's hear it from him. Hi, I'm Vinod Kumar, I'm the CEO of Subex, a pioneer in the space of digital trust. Uh, so I'm going to talk to uh, him about what's happening in the telecom sector, lots of things are changing. What do you see going on? And if you paint out the business landscape for me, please. Yeah. Um, you know that telcos have made a significant impact in many economies around the world, and it has had a big social impact. But with the digitization happening, it is very, very important that the telcos play even a central role in sort of supporting and, he and holding this digital economy together. And to that extent, it is important telcos uh, I see telcos moving from a connectivity provider to a digital life provider. Mm. And that is a significant change. Uh, we are seeing already things pretty much advanced in the Western geographies, but even in developing ge geographies, we are seeing the impact in a very big way. For example, how Geo has made an impact where you know we have gone from a one fiftieth of the mobile data consumption as a country to about a top digital uh, con uh, data consumption, mobile digital data consumption worldwide. Now, there are a few things if you look within that it is drastically changing. One from a, when you talk about digitization, um, earlier all the products that telcos carried were created within the wall gardens of telcos. It, might, it could have been taken as a single product, a bundle product, etc. But the moment you talk about digital, things are changing. And there is a need for them to bundle products created outside the telco world. In fact, to an extent, they, they're even looking at crowdsourcing this and carrying this product to the, uh, to the retail customers. Now, this is a big change. Big change, not just with the business model itself, but the capability that is required, technical capability required, the human capability required, because your systems will have to be more open to, uh, to embrace these new product partners, your, your talent or your resources should be able to work with new partners and then you should have the wherewithal to understand how the whole thing need to be bundled and carried to a retail customer or your enterprise customer so that the customer can see the difference and derive value. So does it mean that um, uh, when you have a scenario like this in the business, the role of HR also needs to evolve in that fashion? What would you say that would be the expectation from HR in yeah. this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, HR will play a very important role in this whole transformation. And there would be probably two key areas where they will have to focus on. One is this whole mindset. Now, when you talk about mindset, it's not just with the ability to bring all these things together, but the whole mindset of doing things much, much faster uh, when compared with some of these things. The competition is from everyone, Google, uh, just about Google, Facebook, everybody is getting into the space. So if you want to do things much faster than when you're talking about bringing, crunching it to 10 times faster uh, so that you can take it to the market uh, 
crunching the delay to 10 times so that it can take that much faster to the market. So the mindset plays a very important role and I think HR would have to play a very important role in creating the right mindset, ensuring that the transition happens within, bringing the new talents with those that different mindset. So that's one aspect. The second would be the skills that are required skills both with respect to understanding the new nuances of the digital business, skills required to how to extend the current strengths they have into the new paradigm. So I guess summar to summarize it, mindset and the skill set would be the two key aspects that the HR would play a very significant role in this type of transformation. Oh, I love that way you've put it. So it's mindset and skill set are the two outcomes that uh, the business leaders will look for from HR. For sure they will look. There could be more, much more than that, but for sure these will be the two things. That thank you. Thank you so very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. So you heard, that was really a fabulous way of understanding it. Think about it. He talked about two takeaways for the HR people. One is, you need to make the change here. Mindset. You know, I also sometimes think there is a heart set angle involved, right? If you really are not totally tuned to it emotionally, it's very hard for you to change. But Nevertheless, I'm just going to keep to the words that he used. He talked about skill set and mindset. So two great ways to look at it. Um, but I also think that this is something that's going to happen right across the sectors. So maybe we should talk to some more people. And if you have something interesting like that happening in your organization, drop us a line and we'd love to come and talk to you about it. Or oh, I'm going to talk to you about one of the things that I've always wondered about, which is reference checks. Why do companies do reference checks? Because what happens is they will ask the candidate to give you a set of names of people they can talk to. And then, of course, the candidate chooses people who are going to say only nice things. You don't want to take a chance and ruin it. That's what I have done. So really, what is the better way to look at it? Potentially, imagine if we could think of the ref check as a way to build the skills that would make the person successful you would take a very, very different kind of an approach. Find out what are the things the person does well and what are the things that the person needs to get better at. And then use that during the onboarding time to really build those skills on a continuous basis, maybe mentor the person and then create a success story for this person. So think about reference checks as a way to build skills. That's just a nicer way to think about things. So I have to tell you about this fantastic place that I went to last week. It was at Nagpur, and they were hosting the Vidarbha Lit Fest. Remember, I talked about it in the previous episode. My God, I was really blown away because of two reasons. One is just the way that this entire Lit Fest has been done. It's the only Lit Fest in India which is dedicated entirely to nonfiction books. Nobody else does it, you know, which I thought is such a neat way to make themselves distinct from the others. More importantly, this entire thing has been crowdfunded. What a phenomenal experience that was. And it made me think that if people decide in a small town like Nagpur that they are going to give some of these biggies, you know, the Jaipur Lit Fests of the world, a run for their money and create something unique and distinctive, well then they are spot on because I'm going to take a bet that this Vidarbha Lit Fest is going to become much bigger in the years to come. So watch out for that. That's where I'm placing my bets. Go there if you haven't been next year. Plan your calendar so that you can be there. You won't be disappointed. And I always think that, you know, the people who have written in to us on social media, thank you for all your comments. Thank you for all those ideas because it's really, we are novices. I'm a novice. And this is the only way with your suggestions that we are going to get better at it and make a show which is really relevant for you. But one thing that I want to call a viewer, somebody from the audience, Nina Claire, she saw the episodes uh, and then she suggested we should talk about mental health and she even put in a real little acronym which I'm going to talk about the next time. So thank you Nina for that really terrific suggestion and meanwhile if you have something really interesting happening in your organization don't forget to write to us. The address is right here below this and write to us, drop us a line, follow us on social media, look for the hashtag notice boards and until the next time then here's goodbye and keep writing. Thank <music> you.